Assalamualaikum. Hello. Uh, welcome back to SIG 2004. This is Sedimentology. Um, lecture number 7. Today's topic is bed forms under unidirectional flow. So, in the previous lecture, uh, we looked at the process of how sediments start to become entrained into a flow. How, how do they start moving inside a flow? Right? And it, yeah, we looked at the relationship between sediment transport and also deposition with uh, flow, flow velocity and also the bed shear uh, uh, boundary shear stress. Right? So the boundary shear stress is the in this, in the most important influence on sediment transport. You have the right amount of boundary shear stress, your sediment starts to become eroded, and grains start to become uh, transported inside your flow. Right? And if you decrease your boundary shear stress, those grains start to fall down again and become deposited. Right? And we've learned uh, about uh, the Hillstrom diagram. Uh, both flow velocity and also boundary shear stress, we can use uh, just common language and just call them flow strength. All right. So let's look at the larger scale. Those things we looked at in the previous lecture were small scale, microscopic, at the scale of individual grains. Right? We saw the other other arrows. The arrows are tall, up, butte butte Okay. We looked at a flow, a current in one direction, and you have grains moving. Right. But given enough time. Uh, you get lots and lots of grains moving, right? And the boundary shear stress is fluctuating. You can get grains accumulating. They berkumpul. They group together and they start to form mounds of sediment. And these mounds of sediments have certain geometries, too, have certain shapes, certain orientations and dimensions, right? And these, uh, these three-dimensional features of sediment mounds caused by flow moving, we call them bed form. So let's look at what bed forms are in detail. So a bed form is a morphological feature formed by the interaction between a flow and a cohesionless sediment on a bed. They are a type of primary sedimentary structure. And you've learned about primary sedimentary structures in first year, right? Uh, things like cross beds and dunes. Uh, soft sediment deformation, slumps, and so on, right? So, bed forms are these kinds of structures. They were formed at the time that the sediment was deposited. Sediment is being transported and is deposited, right? And that is the time that the bed forms develop. It didn't happen after deposition, okay? It happened during deposition. So, uh, bed forms reflect the processes acting at the time of deposition. So it's good to understand uh, how bed forms develop because if you are interested in earth history, you can get clues about the story of how the sediment was transported. In which direction was the sediment transported? What was the strength of the current? And what was the deposition environment? Those things we can answer by looking at the bed forms that are preserved. So examples of bed forms include ripples in sand in the flowing stream or sand dunes in the desert. Right? But in, in this lecture, I just want to focus on bed forms that develop underwater. Subaqueous, we say, right? Just to make the story simpler. Okay, so you have bed forms. And okay, I'll just show you a bed form here. This is a photo of an experiment. We, we did it at the UM here. So we have a small flume tank. So the flume tank is, is, is just a, it's like a rectangle here in cross-section. Yeah? Look at the long section here. And it has uh, transparent walls. right? And you, you can actually put in flow and control the flow velocity. And, you, and the flow is moving, in this case, from the left to right. Okay? So we make water flow from left to right. And we control the velocity. And we dump in sand onto the, onto the base of the flume tank. So what happens after some time is that you start to get these three-dimensional features. And these are your bed forms. And in this case, the, the bed forms are called uh, ripples. Right? And a specific type of ripple. Okay, Asymmetrical lingoid ripples. Okay. 
And you can also see these develop in, let's say, a small channels along a beach or tidal flat, or even at the base of rivers, right? We've seen these kinds of features before. So these are bad forms. Right? Now, uh, what is good about a flume tank is you can actually have a look at the cross section of these bad forms, right? For this, like this one, the ripple is growing, and it meets with the wall of your flume tank. You can actually see what's inside the, these uh, ripples. And what you see are these inclined layers which are dipping towards the right. Very fine here, very subtle, but you can see them once you have coarser grains here, like this. Okay? So this is what we call um, internal stratification. So you have strata, means layers, so it's inside, so we say internal. So internal stratification. And in this case, the internal stratification is in the form of what we call cross-lamination. So you have a bed form, and the bed form has a certain outer shape like this on the surface. But when you make a cross section, you also have uh, internal structures, and these tend to form layers. And these what is these are what we call internal stratification. All right. So in this case, uh, you have a certain shape to your ripples. It's asymmetrical. You have a gentler slope and a steeper slope, and the direction of the current can be determined by just looking at the shape of the ripples. This steeper slope is pointing towards the, uh, is still pointing down current, okay? Now, um, sedimentologists uh, doing experiments with flume tanks, right? So they play around with different grain sizes, they play around with different flow velocities and different water depths, right? Uh, and also they looked at uh, bed forms in nature. They go to a tidal channel or to a strait, to a river and so on. They, they notice that there is a relationship between the, the how fast the flow is moving, uh, how coarse or fine the sediments are in the bed, and what types of uh, bed forms that develop. So you get different kinds of bed forms developing at different flow velocities and at different grain sizes. Right? So... Um, to summarize this, I should um, sedimentologists sedimentology, uh, make these kinds of diagrams. These, this is what is called a bed form stability diagram. And it displays the relationship between grain size, current velocity, and the type of bed form developed. And this is based on a large number of experimental observations, right? playing with flume tanks, let's say and also observations in nature. So let's have a closer look at the uh, bed form stability diagram here. So what do we have here? Right. Okay, so let's have a look at the bed form stability diagram. You have on the horizontal axis here is the diameter of your grain. And also, just to help you out, you have the other work we here at the bottom. So you're going from a very fine sand on the left here, and it is increasing in grain size towards the right. Makin mengasal ke kanan. So we have a very fine, fine sand, medium coarse to very coarse sand. Right? Um, what else? Um, look at the vertical axis here. You have the mean flow velocity. So this is flow velocity, right? So you're talking about the mean, and it is in meters per second. It's going from slower, 0 0.1 meter per second, 0 0.6, and it's increasing towards the top, uh, fastest at the top, which is 4 meters per second. Other things here, notice is, it says here, um, D equals 1 meter. So in this case, our experiment is based on a, a, a tank, which is, which has water up to one meter in depth. Right? No, water uh, which is one meter deep. Okay, the flow depth is one meter. Okay, so remember this platform stability diagram will only work for flows which are one meter deep. You need to construct other diagrams for flows which are deeper or shallower. All right. So because the you know the, because the different phases will yeah the, the shape will and the area will change. So the type of bed form developed is also in, is, uh, uh, influenced by grain size, 
current velocity, okay, and also uh, other factors like low depth, water temperature, in this case it's 10 degrees Celsius, uh, density of the grains of course, sorting, and the grain shape. Okay, so looking at the best form stability diagram, you notice these different phases here. Here you have ripples forming at this uh, uh, flow velocity and grain size, and other parts in other um, at other velocities and grain sizes, you don't have any the bed forms developed or any sediments moving. You can have bed forms called dunes uh, developed at during different uh, other other times, or also upper plain beds, and also what you call in phase waves. Uh, in phase waves, sorry. Okay, so there is a relationship between the type of bed form developed, genus bed form yang akan terbentuk, with grain size, and also with flow velocity. Right? So I'll just show you uh, an example here. Right? So let's say if you have a bed of sediment which is made up of very fine grain sand. Right? So at uh, Zero, uh, and then you have a flow moving in one direction and the flow velocity is 0 0.1 meters per second. So what type of bed form will develop? So when you increase your flow velocity, say up to 0 0.2 meters per second, you start to get ripples being developed. right? And then uh, you gradually increase the flow velocity, it's just ripples being formed in your bed. But once you uh, go beyond 1 meter per second, the ripples change into what we call upper plain beds. And when you go beyond, uh, uh, when you near 3 meters per second, it the upper plain beds transform into what we call in-phase waves. And at different grain sizes, you get different kinds of transformations. Let's say for uh, medium sand, it changes from ripples into dunes before going into upper plain beds and in-phase waves. And for real, uh, for very coarse sand, nothing happens at the low velocities, no movement of the grains. Uh, at higher velocities, uh, you start to get lower plane beds, which change gradually into dunes, and then changes into uh, in-phase waves. All right? So. Uh, it seems that there is a sequence of bed forms produced under unidirectional flow. Uh, water flowing over a flat bed of sand will, with increasing flow strength, develop a sequence of bed forms that differ in terms of morphology and behavior. So, in general, you get a sequence like this. At lower flow velocities, you get bed forms that we call lower plane beds, and when we increase the velocity, these evolve into ripples. And further increase the velocity, the ripples grow into what we call dunes, and then the dunes can transform into upper plane beds at higher flow velocities. Right? Okay. So that is the general sequence. So low velocities, you get these kinds of bed forms. Higher velocities, you get these kinds of bed forms. But remember, not all of the bed forms will develop for a given sand size. And we can talk about this general sequence here, but looking at this, you will never get any low plane beds developed if your fans are very fine grain. Okay? This is just uh, to visualize, just a generalization here. Okay, I think I'll stop here first. It's already 15 minutes. Uh, I think you get the picture, the general picture. You have a sequence. Uh, different bed forms developed uh, at different flow velocities and also at different uh, grain sizes, right? So in the next part, uh, part two of the of lecture number seven here, we will have a look in detail at the uh, major types of bed forms that develop under unidirectional flow. Okay, see you.